Alright, so we're at the Vic Victorian Time Attack 2019 and we're here with Brett from Elusive Racing. Brett, do you want to tell us a bit about the setup in this awesome little Honda? Yeah, 100%. So um, what we've got here is a Honda Integra DC2 uh, running a K24 K-Swap conversion uh, with a Borg Warner 9180 on the side of it. Um, coupled that up with a um, PPG 5-speed dog box. Yep. Um, and then it's all run through um, our Mtron ECU. So we uh, run a KV8 ECU from the boys at Mtron, um, doing an amazing job, which yep. obviously supports us running our um, eight injectors and um, multiple fuel pumps and our, um, our MoTeC PDM and all the electronics we need to obviously be at the front of our class. Okay, now the guys were telling me in the pits that this thing is logging uh, wheel spin at above 200 kilometers an hour, is that right? <laughs> Yeah, so just then we got wheel spin up to 265, yeah, wow. um, and then it grips in and yeah starts um, starts getting up to um, here at Phillip Island today. We're doing 289. Yeah, wow. On the front straight. Yeah, that's that's flying. So you drove the car you said earlier in naturally aspirated form before here. Yep. Yeah. So um, probably 12 months ago the car was still naturally aspirated. Um, I've been working with Kenny for a while now, and um, we sat down with a, a few of the boys and wanted to build a club sprint car that would be competitive. Um, with the brains trust that was involved, um, we went from yeah normally aspirated to, to turbo. Um, normally aspirated car. The best thing about it is we set up the whole suspension as a normally aspirated yeah. form to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Um, and then yeah, um, set some nice lap times here normally aspirated and put the big turbo on and did the build. And um, surprising enough, went to World Time Attack and and won our first year there last year. So that's pretty cool. So being a Honda and turbocharged, those things just you know horsepower seems to be quite easy to make from what I've seen. It must be a bit of a handful to drive. What sort of power is it making in this current form? Um, currently on low boost, it's around the 400 kilowatt mark. Um, we have had it higher, but it's just not really usable for the for the Yokohama tyre that we're running on. So I'd, um, I'd love to drive it with a, a stickier tyre and do some better lap times. But um, yeah, with club sprint and, and street class, that's the tyre that we have to run on. Winding it up to about 600 kilowatt isn't out of, um, out of the question at this point yeah, in time. Yeah. So what sort of lap times would something like this run? So Eastern Creek um, does a 138, which is what we won World Time Attack with. Um, last week I did a 1 minute 16.3 at Sandown. Jesus. Um, and then this morning we were doing a um, little bit of a dry run to check out our final drive and, and, and gearing and RPM was all going to be and we did a, um, a 1 minute 40 dead, uh, 1 minute 41 dead, sorry. Um, so yeah, um, back out there for the next session to give it a bit more of a stretch on its legs and um, yeah, had made a bit of a driver error so our day's been cut short. Yeah, so it's got a 5 speed PPG dog box um, with a shift cut gear knob so we can um, change gears obviously flat foot. Yep. It's it's an amazing thing but obviously things do go wrong at time to time and, and coupled up with um, obviously electronic throttle bodies and, and obviously as I mentioned the, the 8 injectors, it, it helps the car with its drivability heaps. Um, with its big fly by wire throttle body as well that helps us control boosts with um, with our trashing control strategies that the boys at Imtron have created. What sort of fuel are you running this on? Uh, petrol or ethanol? Or? So we're, we're running it on um, a Cheetah not, um, E85. Yeah. So the best thing about that is that it's regularly available. We can buy it in drums um, and it's very consistent, which what we've found is, um, is what you want when you're starting to push things to the limit. Mm. Just curious, what sort of RPM would a turbo Honda like this run? So at um, 290 kilometres an hour, about an hour and a half ago, it was 9,000 RPM. Okay. It's, it's an amazing car to drive and um, we're still experiencing 0.2 of a G acceleration rate right through from 60 kilometres an hour through till 290. It does not taper yeah. off. Um, it's an absolute animal. Making sure we can stop, obviously we need to put some big brakes on it. Have you run it on a more stickier tyre just in practice or have you always tried to set the car up on these club sprint style tyres? We try to stick with the club sprint tyre just to the fact of um, it's more relevant to what we're trying to do. We have done a couple of things um, normally aspirated on a stickier tyre and the gain's about four seconds. But it's just one of those things where we're sort of staying on this tyre for World Time Attack and obviously Vic Time Attack to sort of keep the car in the development process. You need to obviously get the drivability right in a turbo car. Um, obviously the best thing we did was a big inlet manifold and a big turbo. Um, we don't really have lag to be honest. It's, um, it's a pretty cool car to drive. So it is a 2.4 litre? Yes. yes. So did you say it's a K20 head or 24? Oh no, K24. So a lot of people go down the avenue of putting a K20 head on a K24. Um, we've done all the back to back works and we did really see a massive need to go down that avenue um, so we've stayed full k24 head k24 block um, obviously had to put some sleeves in it to, to give it a bit more strength but um yeah, yeah. I, I was under the impression you're probably running a closed deck type 
Yes, engine. so we, we run dart and sleeves in this engine. Um, so what they call their mid sleeve, which is essentially a wet sleeve. Um, just just to give it a little bit more reliability. It's, yeah. it's one of those things where we're starting to get towards the limit of what it can do. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, we've still got probably um, another couple hundred kilowatts that we can get out of it without stressing it too hard. Um, and inside the driver's door, I've got nine positions of boost that I can put into okay. the car personally without even coming into the yeah, pit. That's so great. That's, great. Uh, that's pretty cool. And it still runs a wet sort of style oiling system? Yeah, so it runs. Uh, it still runs obviously a conventional sump with an external oil pump. Um, just trying to eliminate some little issues, but yeah, the, the sump still carries the the um, majority of the oil. There's no oil tank or anything like that. Um, that was just something that we could regulate the pressure that we're getting out of it instead of relying onto a, a factory oil pump. Thanks for giving giving us a bit more information about this cool little Honda. Cool. Thanks for showing interest. <laughs>